Hey there, it's Nathalie. Thank you so much for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Uh, the video I'm putting together for you has to do with recovering these cushions on this vintage rocking chair. This chair has been in our family for years. It has was started off with as natural wood and then it was painted avocado green and then now it's I just painted it red to go with my new kind of farmhouse I guess kind of style decor with my gray and stuff. Anyway I decided to you I found some chenille bedspreads and so I'm going to show you how to make the cushions the back cushion and the seat cushion and how I recovered the bottom part of this and so that using the staple gun and that sort of thing. I also have this cute little feed sack that I bought kind of sort of vintage it is uh, post 60s because it has a zip code on it so that means it's after 60 but uh, I'm a little post 60 also so I'm not sure how vintage I am but anyway anyway uh, we're going to do this. I'm not a professional. I'm a DIYer, so I hope you get something out of this. Be sure to uh, like and subscribe if you like this. And uh, hey, let's go ahead and get started with this. Okay, so here's the chair in all of its radiant glory, past glory. Um, the back cushion is still in good shape, so I'm going to take that off and I'm going to recover that. And I'll probably take this cover is probably over the original cover. I'll take this one off and then so it won't have three covers on it. I'll do the same with the seat cushion. Show you how to do that. A little sew in there. This uh, bottom piece, move the camera just a tiny little bit here and show you. This is stapled in right here. And so I'll just remove those staples. This trim, I have just glued this trim on around. I don't know that I'll come back with a piece of trim on this. It probably won't fit with that. But then I'll get all of this off and then take this and uh, paint this. And I. I'm going to use a screwdriver and a pair of needle nose pliers to remove this. Now, probably I could cover over the top of this, but I really don't want to. I want to go ahead and take this off and put a whole new cover on there. Some of these are a little tighter than others. You can see where this is, uh, where I've eased the fullness in to get that to lay smooth. We'll do the same thing on the new cover. Grab your stool, get this chair elevated where you can get a hold of it and uh, work at a comfortable uh, angle. It is all stripped down and ready to go. So I'm fixing to take this outside and paint it. And when it's good and dry, then we will see what else we can do. Just got some chenille bedspreads. And so I think I'm going to do my cushions in the chenille, and I love this fringe, and I may put that fringe at the bottom of the cushion. It's, I mean, it's uh, going to go on the wood part, but so I'm going to show you how to make the cushions, the back cushion and the seat cushion and then the seat liner out of this chen vintage chenille bedspread. When you're dealing with vintage chenille, there's a couple of things you need to look for. One is some stains. This one doesn't have many stains, but, and this is actually uh, per the trim. This is the right side over here. And so it has like the pattern on this right side is mostly flat, but I really like this bumpy. And there she is. So I'm going to cut my center piece from this bumpier side of this, but this is one of the problems with vintage chenille, and this is all of the little fray things that have happened in here. But I've got plenty to cut around this, and so I'm going to cut my mainest piece, my mainest piece, the back piece, the center back piece first. and. Uh, there she is. Do you see her? Ta-da! Right there. It's kind of like making the bed, Mama. I like to get under the sheets when you're making the bed. Anyway, I'm fixing to have to put her someplace else, and then I'll get back to this. But, friends, this has been a trip down memory lane. Okay, so this was the seat cushion. I took this, like, old-world-looking cover off, and underneath it 
was this quilt cover. Underneath that, which I'm not going to get into, is the original from the uh, 60s and 70s cover. So, <laughs> anyway, so I covered it. This was from my husband's mom. I covered it with this, with this old quilt. Then I covered it again, which this one went away. I covered it again with this. And the last cover was this, this old world thing. So I was, as I was taking this apart to, uh, to use this cover as a pattern, there's more old quilt. Anyway, so this has been kind of a fun thing. And, you know, I might change my mind and decide to put the old quilt back up there, but I don't think so. And I'm not even sure why I pulled that cover off. I was I, because it's been like about a week since I started this, and I had this cover that was the old world one that I've already taken off to use as my pattern. So, here, remove the cat again and get started. I've centered the center of this up with this point right here. Right there. Right. Yep. And then make sure I'm not going to get too far over on into these little empty areas over here. There's this medallion center, and I think I'm going to use this as the main part of the back. And there's a couple of, there's a pull right here. I'll work that through with a crochet hook and pull it to the back side. But I think this is what I'm going to use for the actual focal point part. So I'm going to, I've got my uh, pattern template, old cover, folded in half. I'm going to line this up. There's a star in the middle. So I'm going to put that in the, in the star. Make sure that I'm still centered up there, there. So now that I'm going to use this as my pattern, and I'm going to add about four inches onto that. So let me do one panel first. All right. So I'll let this be my, my flap over. My fold over, get this out a minute under there, so just evened up. Old fabrics, yep. All right. And I need to make sure that I reverse this for the other side. So what I'm going to do so that you can know about this, this is the right side up here. So I'm going to put two pins in here so they won't just so they don't slide out. This is my right side of the bottom. Move this out of the way. So then now this will be my pattern. I'll pull that thread back through there on the other side. And we're going to go right sides together. Let me see if I can find a spot that's not so pulled. So these two pins are right here. They're going to go face down. So 
So there's my two pieces. I'll leave them like that. I'm going to go ahead and put a pin in that so that I'll remember that those are right sides together. Okay, that's the bottom side. Now to cut the seat part. This section is in pretty good shape. There's not hardly any pulls on it. So what I've done, I folded my, this is the, actually going to go against the very bottom wood part of the chair. It'll have a pad underneath it, but I folded it in half. This is using it as my pattern. So I found the center point of my design here and here and down here, and I folded this in half. And now I'm going to go ahead and open this on out. and cut in just a little bit here because that's going to go around one of the arm spindles and I'll cut in right in the middle of this but not all the way. This one has a Y. I need to cut the Y over on that other one because I missed that. Let's do that. There, there, we'll make it go around the curve easier. And right smack into the middle of this one and it'll have a couple of other kind of little cuts in there too. All right. There it is. I'm ready to get started. Now there's a fold down the middle, but that's not my middle. This was the middle where the pattern was. That's what I went by was not with a fold, but with the pattern. Let me just show you how cute this was with the quilt on there. And like I say, the quilt will still be there. It'll just be underneath. But that was pretty cute. And But that's not the look that I'm after right now. This was the cushion that I took out. And it's new. It's like layers of foam. Uh, but not. it's not like spongy foam. It's like layers of batting. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's pretty dense batting. And so I'll fit it into those areas, but that was what was on there whenever I disassembled it this time. And uh, now this piece that I just cut I think that's going to be good because it's not old dead red and it's not exactly white, kind of a creamy, a little bit creamy color. goes with the vanity, uh, the wardrobe that I redid. You can see that. I'll put that in the description where we redid the bu buffet, not a wardrobe, buffet. It was also my husband's mom's buffet. So we'll get this all straightened out. I've got to clip in a little bit more here and here, make sure my pattern is centered and get this ready to staple but let's clip in just a little bit more and that will turn under this will turn under pull together We're about to get this show on the road. So this is going to be much easier if I do this upside down. But to get started, I'm going to use my little arrow uh, electric stapler. And I'm just going to staple in a couple of places. Make sure that my pattern is straight where I wanted it. And then I'm going to go to the side. Just a couple of places on the side. Not where it's going to turn under. Well, it has a safety. There you go. I have to put some pressure on it to get the safety to do right. All right. One more back here. And I may take these out if they don't line up right, but this will get me uh, good to get to turn it upside down to work on it. So kind of pull that across, make sure it's kind of snug.
and Kitty No does not like the stapler. So if I want her to go someplace, the stapler it is. Okay, so now I can turn this upside down and work on it. It'll be easier. It'll have more pressure on it. So I'm going to do that. Well, I don't know if you can figure this out or not, but I turned this rocking chair upside down and I put it on top of another red stool. Same paint technique, same color red. It goes in the kitchen. This is going to stay in the den. Okay, so I've said this before, but I'll say it again. I'm not a professional. I am a DIYer and I'm helping other DIYers. So uh, I'm sure that the professionals out there would probably just like turn over in their whatevers or get like really upset at me about the way that I do this, but I don't, don't I'm, have no intention of putting them out of business. So I'm just kind of easing that fullness in around the corner. You go ahead and come back and pull this the front. I'm not going to pull it too terribly tight, but just kind of firm. And I'm using like five staples that go with this stapler because this is not very thick fabric. So I'm going to ease around the corner. I love this stapler because it has a safety. I mean, unless you have that safety pushed in, it is not going to staple. Now, I will trim this off around this edge after a while, or sometime, yes, before I turn it back over and do it right. Okay, let me get to this other side, and then I'll turn it around so you can see the sides. And I'll cut all of this excess out of here. Get on this other side. Oops, almost got myself into a corner here. So instead of going to the corner, I'm going to go to the center of that curve, pull that up, mash it down. There's my safety. Okay. And then just ease that around that corner. I sure hope y'all are subscribing to my channel. Uh, that would be like super awesome. All right, before I do these uh, all around the side, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get the back. But let me catch this. Okay, rather than cutting this edge, and I could just cut that because again, this chair is not gonna get that much wear. But I'm gonna turn this edge of this fabric under, cuddle it right up next to there, and then just kind of roll fold this and staple this back here this is the cut that I made around the leg and so I've got that tucked in I'm going to pull this over and staple it pull this back. I'll turn this edge under just a little bit and then staple that. So I'm going to go back, put this back on the tripod and then show you from there. But I just wanted to show you on this underside, let me see if I can get there, that that is, that fabric is tucked in right in that area. So sometimes the tricky part of doing this video is like not getting my hands in the way. So I am pulling this fabric over as far as what I can get it to stretch and then hopefully I can get my stapler up in here. Let me do this one more time. Polyfill batting stuff back up in there and then pull this around. Turn it under just a tiny bit. Tuck that in. Coming around this spindle, uh, I've cut this 
right here. Uh, you can kind of see where I cut it in there. But it's not quite far enough, so it's kind of puckery around that. And so I'm going to do like three little clips in. Uh, let me see if I can get you where you can see this. Do a little clip. I don't want to clip cut too deep. I can always come back and cut a little bit more. So I'm nipping in like a, maybe about a quarter to a half an inch just to see if that'll tuck in now and not pucker. Okay, I think that will work good. Now I painted this back side of this because I knew that it would be exposed at least a little bit anyway. So, I think that looks pretty good right through that area right there. That's pretty smooth. All right, so I'm going to turn this back so I can staple it. And I had to go and get my uh, manual stapler out too because some of the places are a little bit tight. I like to use the electric one because... Uh, my hands are a little bit on the antique side also. So before I do this, let me make sure this is smooth where I want this. And can I get in here with my electric? Yes, I can. Get my thumb out of the way. Make sure that stays out of the way. All right, so now I've got that tucked in. I've got the edge of the fabric folded under. I'm going to give that a little pull, stretch that down. Staple right there. There's a rung. This thing comes through right there. There's a little bump. Can't do it with that one. So we'll see if I can get my manual one. And that's smooth across there. That looks pretty good. Tuck that in there. I'm going to put one more staple right there. Hold that. All right. Now this other side, and I've uh, already stapled, pulling it around, but let me go ahead and ease that on in just a little bit more. That will almost completely cover that. I could separate it, but I think I'm going to go ahead, let's see. If I do that, I'm going to do that, and that's going to cover that part right there. I don't think that one's going to work in there, so because that's where that rung is. And I called it a rung, but it's not a rung. It's where this thing comes through and it makes a little bump. This would be a rung. Okay, I think that looks pretty smooth. I'm going to, and so I've done all of one side. I'm going to trim off this excess. I'm going to do the other side. You don't have to watch me do that. And then we'll come back and make the see how it looks and then make the cushions. Here's the view from the bottom side. And so now this is all stapled in place. And so whenever it's uh, in place, sitting up, there's not going to be any stuff that's hanging down. And from the top side, that's how it looks around those upright pieces. Now I'm fixing to turn this over so you can see it sitting up. I'm pretty happy with the way that that looks. It's nice and smooth around uh, these little spindle parts and at the back. It's smooth across here. Got that little padding. I may not even put any, I thought about putting some fringe on there, but I think I won't even do that. Now I'm going to go uh, get started stitching the cushions. So just a peek, here's the red stool, and I also covered the top of this. Uh, you can see how to cover a round stool on uh, one of my other YouTube videos. And uh, I have my dish towel that says, all you need is love and a cat, and of course it's a black cat. And she's right there, she got out of the way of the staple gun. 
So this is my coffee wall. That was a little DIY project from a fence that uh, was in my mom's yard, my mom and dad's yard. And so I've got my collection there. You can see this all over how to do this. It, uh, I didn't make a video of it. Uh, you can see this at myhallcloset.com and uh, check out the, how to make a uh, coffee rack out of an old fence. Okay, I have my two pieces, the back, it's for the bottom side of the little add-on cushion. And I've got them pinned right sides together. And uh, this has a finished edge on that. I can leave that alone or I could turn it under. And I think I'm gonna leave that edge alone. But this edge, and I just flip this over, so this is the wrong side, and this is a straight edge. This is These are my curved edges right there. This is a straight edge. And so I want to turn this under just about, oh, like a half an inch or an inch, something like that. And I'm going to straight stitch that. And I'm going to leave these pinned together. This is not going to get in my way. And uh, you know what? Let me just scoot that pin over just a tiny bit. And... So I'm just going to turn this edge under about this far. So let me move my sewing machine back over where you can see what I'm going to do. And yay for my new light that I just put in there. That's so exciting. Like I said, I'm going to leave that other edge alone because it has a machine finish to it so I'm not worried about it raveling out or fraying out. This is the right side. This is what is going to be up that will actually sit on and so this is a right side and this is a right side. So I'm going to mark this because they're going to go right sides together. So just let, put a little pin in there just for helping y'all. This one that I just stitched is going to be the first one down and that is this one and so let me see which side it goes to like this and like this so this is the first one down because that whenever it's turned right side out then this will be the exposed area this is the one that had the machine stitch on it and this is right sides are marked here, so right sides go down. Into this corner. And here, kind of smooth that across. There's my pin for the right side. And I know it's kind of hard to see with it being white on white, but this is going to be to the inside of the cushion. So I'm going to pin my corners. It's got kind of corners, they're round, they're not exactly corner corners. Okay, now we can go back to the sewing machine, stitch this in place. And remember, this one was kind of a little bit larger, so I'm going to take, instead of cutting it down, which I could do, I'm going to go ahead and just take a larger seam in this. I think I'm going to do just about a one inch seam. So let's go stitch. Alright, let's turn this right side out. There's a part that needs to be pulled back through, so let me grab a crochet hook real quick. I'm sure I have a tiny one someplace, but I'm not going to go try to find that right now. Somewhere in all of my collections of stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ease this through a couple of threads, grab a hold of that, and ease that back through and just 
pull that back. There's the loop. That's how what you do with a sweater too. When if you have a, a snag on a sweater, you just ease it back through instead of cutting it off and then it all comes unraveled. Okay, so here it is on the back side. In that little pocket. And there's the front. All right, let's put this together. Let's stuff this in here. There's the cushion, the seat cushion in place. And uh, so now we can start on the back of this. Okay, this is my right side of the front side. And uh, so I, and I've got some vintage twill tape. I guess it's vintage. I don't know that it's vintage. I just bought it, what, at a estate sale. So maybe you think it's vintage like that. So what I'm gonna do, this is the front and this is the look I want as it goes over the uh, spindle on the back of the rocking chair. So I'm going to turn this and put it in so make sure that it doesn't catch in this seam, but at the top side. There we go. And so I'll just be careful as I go around my corners. So I'm going to duplicate in opposite for this corner. So this inside part laps in so we'll put this and you don't have to do that by any stretch of the imagination it does not have to be done that way and make a loop you could make this out of fabric it doesn't you could you could probably even make it out of the chenille but I wanted to do it out of this twill and so we'll leave an opening at the bottom of this. So this is the right side. And I had two places, two pulls that I have already pulled back through since I've already showed you how to do this. And then this is the back side of that. And this is the nubbier side. So that's going to be my right side of the back. So I'm going to turn that down and you can see there, there's not much pattern showing through. This was probably originally the top side again but I like that back side better. Alright so I'm going to pin this corner and I'm probably going to leave it open about this far and then I will stitch that by hand. That'll be easy to stitch by hand. So I'm going to do a back stitch, uh, back and forth stitch, bar stitch, not a bar tag, just a back and forth stitch to start off with and whenever I finish. Okay, so where this tab is, I didn't tell you this a while ago, but I'm going to double stitch across that just to give it a little extra security, but not all the way out to the corner. I'm going to turn that corner. Now then as I turn this corner, I want to make sure that that tab is out of the way so I don't stitch that. And there she is. Oh my gosh. Sit down. All right, we'll turn this right side out. It looks small compared to that. There we go, there's my little tabs. And this is my front side. I don't think that the quilt is gonna show through that.
All right, so what I'm going to do instead of ladder stitch, I'm going to whip stitch this so I have taken from the back side and pushed it forward and then just my little seam allowance, fold it under, put a little pin there, and I'll try not to catch my uh, the pillow cushion in there as I go. I'll just kind of lift up a little bit. So I've got a thread, I've got it knotted, and so I'm going to start at this end and work away from me. Kind of bury that knot. I like to do that. Clip that off. That's somebody, that's, oh, there, there it goes. It's just a stray thread. All right, so I'm going to scooch under and then pick up. Scooch under and then just pick up. There it is, all finished. I love the way that the cushions turned out. Thank you so much for staying with me. If stayed to the end of the video, be sure you subscribe, give me a little thumbs up, hop over to myhallcloset.com, check out my blog, subscribe over there for uh, my resource library. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.